Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Welcome to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making paper gift bows. And what I love about paper bows is how nearly perfect you can make them. You don't have to worry about tying your ribbon in just the right way or anything like that. You just cut out your paper, attach it in order, and voila, you have a gorgeous bow. So I have designed four bows for you to make. One is a small and simple bow made from just one half sheet of paper. It's great for small gifts. The second is a larger bow made from one full sheet of paper. In fact, it maximizes the paper so that there is very little waste because really that's a lot of bow for one sheet of paper. The third is a giant bow made from five sheets, sheets of paper. And the fourth is this special filigree bow. I've cut out little blossoms in each of the paper curls to create a beautiful and unique look. This one is just one sheet of 12 inch by 12 inch paper as well. These two are the same. Now the type of paper that you use for your gift bows is very important. The lighter and more flexible the better. So heavy and thick card stocks or glitter paper are not going to work well. But if you have regular paper, that works like a charm. My giant bow is made with plain pink copy paper. Uh, isn't that amazing? In addition to paper, you need a brad, which is a small paper fastener with little tines that you can separate and bend to secure your bow in place. You can buy them at most craft stores and online as well. So, would you like to make a paper bow with me? Yeah? Okay, so let me show you how to do it. It's really rather fascinating. So to get my gift bow template, head on over to jennifermaker.com and click on Libraries. Scroll down and then click Enter the Free Resource Library. And then you'll want to type your password that I sent you an email. Scroll down until you find my gift bows. And I'm going to show you how to uh, download this. Just You just click on it. And in Chrome, all you have to do is click this little up arrow and click Open. And that will open the zip file for you, actually. It's really easy. And you open up the directory and you locate the file that you need. So in this case, uh, we're gonna, you know, we have lots of SVG and DXF and PDF file. Now, of course, you can cut this out by hand and I've provided the PDF file for you. But if you wanna use Cricut Design Space, let me show you how to upload that and how to resize it so that you can make the giant bow. So you wanna click on new project Upload, upload image, browse, and then find the SVG file. In this case, we'll use the big filigree gift bow as our example. Here we go and click open. Now it looks like this. Click save. And then click on it when it un un uploads and click insert image. And so we have our regular bow here. Now, if we were just to click make it right now, it will separate into two mats. We don't want this. Click cancel. Select everything, so just click and drag, and then click attach. And now when you click make it, everything is on one mat. So much better use of paper. But what if you want a giant bow? So all you need to do is select everything again, and we're gonna resize it. And I usually just use the arrow, the um, double-ended arrow in the lower right corner to resize. And I just click and drag until it's the size I want. And I, I look at my rulers on the, the top and the left side to see what size. So in this case, I want that largest ta uh, ribbon there, piece of paper. I want it to be no bigger than 11 and a half inches because that's the limit for a 12 by 12 cutting. Of course, if you had a 12 by 24 cutting mat, you could make a gigantic ribbon, uh, but we're gonna stick with a 12 by 12 cutting mat. So I'm gonna make sure that it's no bigger they are 12 by 12, okay? And what if you want to put it onto copy paper, like I did for my pink bow? Well, copy paper is 8 and a half by 11, right? So that means that you need to make the largest piece no bigger than um, 10 and a half inches long because that's the limit for, you know, it's separating things out into 8 and a half by 11 inches into mats. So you'll see me fiddling with things a bit here to get it to the right size. And this is normal, right? I'm just trying to get it small enough so that it fits onto eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I'm not quite there yet. I'm going to try again. I am really close. I can see that I'm at 11 and a half inches if I look at my mat preview there. So I'm going to bring this in again, select everything and resize. 
and double check that this is under 11 inches. Bring that in just a little bit more. And there we go. Now I can now select a uh, letter size paper, eight and a half by 11, and it separates it out into five mats so that I can make a giant bow. And that's all we have to do. There's nothing else to prepare. So it's really just about the sizing that you want for your bow. And when you're ready, you just click uh, continue and select your Cricut and uh, select your material. Now I'm going to use my pink copy paper. So I'm just gonna search on copy paper because that's one of the settings. And uh, we select that and we click done. And that's it. So let me show you how to put this together. Here are the pieces all cut out. And what we can do is pay attention to any pattern. So this paper has a sort of embossed polka dot pattern. So we wanna turn it over. When we have a pattern, we wanna work from the reverse side. So we're going to assemble these pieces just as I'm showing you here. You might wanna to refer to this video or the graphic that's on my blog. So, and we do it, I've set it up this way so that you can have really big bows. So I've separated the arms of the pattern out. And you wanna sort of stagger them the way that I've done and then use tape to you know attach them together. And make sure you're covering all of the cut lines with tape. Otherwise it will be less secure when you go to assemble it. Um, it really, it takes four pieces of tape, um, which isn't you know, such a big deal really. So I like to do those two at the top and then I turn it around 90 degrees and I put two more pieces of tape on the top and bottom just like this. So let me show you what this looks like in the light so you can see where that tape is. So you see? All right, so we, now we just need to do the same thing with the other two sets of gift bow pieces of paper. <laughs> we need a good word for these arms, the gift bow arms. <laughs> so we stagger them around, pay attention, make sure all of your um, little points are pointing in the same orientation, right? So just refer to this graphic to put them down. Now, when you make the smaller bows, I've already attached these for you. But if I attach these for you in the big bow, then you don't have the option to resize it. So that's why you need to do some assembly here. I figure the payoff um, is better so that you have options in how big you want to make your bow. I mean, you could use a 12 by 24 cutting mat and create a huge bow that would be amazing for like a new car <laughs> or something really big, you know, like a lawnmower or a bike or something, right? And you have that option now. So there we go. We have a uh, done our second one and now we need to do a third one. Now you'll note that these are three different sizes, a small, a medium, and a large. That's important too. So make sure that you're putting the same sizes together and that all the little points are in the same orientation relative to one another. And refer, you know, if you always just re refer to what you've done, you want to be consistent. That's really the most important thing. So make sure that's all on there nice and straight. And put your tape down. Try not to cover the little hole in the middle. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but it's better if you don't cover it because that's where your brad will go to secure your bow together. And it turns out that a piece of normal tape fits perfectly in between the edge of your paper bow there and the hole, so no big deal. Okay, so we have those all ready to go. Set those aside. And the first thing that we're going to do as far as assembly is take this center part here and we wanna pay attention to where our pattern is and we're gonna roll it up just like this. We're gonna take our brad. And by the way, my brads are much too short. <laughs> when you buy a brad, make sure you get one with longer tines than what I have because it was difficult to use these short ones, but this is all my craft store had when I went shopping today. So you're gonna stick the brad into your paper, just as I'm showing you here, and you're gonna wrap it around and insert it into the other hole, just like this. 
right? So we want it to look like this. All right, so make sure you're holding this tightly. You don't want the brad to fall out. If you do, you'll have to start over. Locate your smallest set of arms for your gift bow. And with a tape against, tape side against your rolled up center, you're, just as I'm showing here, you're gonna take one of the arms and fold it around. You're really curling it around, you're not folding it. You don't, you wanna avoid folding as much as you can. But you're just folding it around like this and then you're hooking it into the brad at the bottom. So let's do that again so you can see. So you're just sort of curling it around and putting it into the brad. And you'll have to keep a good hold on that brad at the bottom where all your layers are. So it just flips around and goes under the bottom. There we go, just like that. So that is our first layer. And you can see the brad sticking out at the bottom. So we take the medium sized set of arms and we put it right attached to the brad on the bottom just like this. Keep a good firm hold on it. And do the same thing. Curl it around and back put it into the brad. You might need to move your uh, top layer around just a little bit so there's more space. And do the same thing. Flip it around to the back. There we go, and one more to do on this layer. There we go. You could stop here, but let's do another one. <laughs> I mean, I think most gift bows stop there, but we're gonna do another one. And technically you could just keep doing more if you wanted, but it will get harder uh, the more layers you have, just because you have to keep a hold of those. So we have the tine of the brad through the hole of the bottom, and we flip it around and attach it in the bottom just like that. And it's gonna get harder to hold all of these layers as you go if you need to. You can smoosh that center layer in and pop it out later. And I'm sorry, it's off camera right now. So the stiffer the paper, the harder this is to do. And of course, having these tiny brad um, tines make, is making it tough for me. So make sure you get the longer ones. And here's our last one. We're just flipping that around and putting it into the bottom. And there we go. We have it. Now we have at the back, we have our little tines sticking up. Mine are so short, it's really difficult to get them to fold down, but normally you would just fold them down to secure everything in place. So I'm gonna to have to use my little weeding tool here to try to just get in there and fold them down. So if you have this problem, this is what you can do as well. <laughs> normally though, when you have, if you, as long as you get your brads long enough, so mine are like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch long, definitely not long enough. I would say you want at least a half an inch for this. Um, you would just you know, push them down with your fingers and it's actually really easy to do. It's nowhere near this big of a struggle. Still, it's possible with the short ones, as you can see. So there we go, the brad is pushed down and everything is secured. This bow's not going anywhere. Isn't it pretty? So now we need to put our little ribbon ends on um, the bottom. Of course, this is optional, but I think this makes it look looks very pretty. I also think it's a cool way to personalize a bow because you could cut out some vinyl and put it right on one of the ends of one of these uh, ribbon ends, right? I've done that with the big pink bow that I made. So you can just tape these down. You could also just stick them through the tines of your brad if your brad tines were long enough. <laughs> um, so mine weren't, obviously, so I am simply taping them in here. And here we go. We have a finished, beautifully handmade paper bow.
And you could use whatever paper you wanted so long as it's not too thick. If it gets too thick, you will find that it's pretty much impossible to make. It just won't want to curl and bend and you just didn't have enough flexibility to make all of those little tight, uh, you know, all the little tight turns for each of the little points of your bow. Now, another file that I have in my uh, set is a smaller bow where I've actually put all the tines together for you. So here I've cut them out and I'm using the same paper, but because it's smaller, right? So I still have this, you know, um, embossed polka dot pattern on these, but because the, the pattern, the bow is smaller, it's going to be less flexible because, you know, it's just a matter of sizing. So we need to pre-curl these, these uh, arms of our bow or else they're just not going to want to turn for us. So just take, you know, run them between your thumb and forefinger and gently curl them as I'm doing here and it'll make a really big difference. You can, of course, use something else to curl them, like, you know, the barrel of a pen or a marker. But this works pretty well because you're doing it gently and that decreases chances of, you know, accidentally folding or creasing the edges of your paper. It'll make a difference. It's also kind of weakening the paper as you do this. And that also makes it more flexible. Okay, so let's assemble this and we put it together exactly the same way that we did the big one. And I'm just showing you so that we'll go through this a little quicker so that you can see how it works. So just make sure you get it on that brad there and flip each of the arms around, just curling them right around. I think that this is, without being able to see how this works, it's difficult to understand it. And keeping your thumb and forefinger on the brad in the center gets tricky. So you might want to just squish it down so that you have a better grip on it. And it's a lot easier than to like turn it as you go. And you can curl your edges as well as you're going if they don't seem like they're curled enough. And the rest of this is the same as the red one. So I'll speed it up so that we can see the finished product. So there we go, there is our finished little bow. Isn't that super cute? I think that these would be really fun to personalize. And then also it makes it really clear this is a handmade bow that should be kept rather than just tossed away in the recycling. So here are our two bows and remember, you can resize this to make them even bigger if you'd like. I really didn't know it was possible to even make bows out of paper until about a year ago. But then I took apart a bow and I could see how it was all put together. And I think that we just take the store-bought bows for granted these days, you know? So being able to make a special bow for a special gift is really rather fun. Now tomorrow I'm going to show you how to create that knockout effect in a word. So we'll be combining two words or a word and an image together. It's really awesome. And I'm still taking project ideas. Send them in at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. And remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.